Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nate Panda podcast. Today, we will be discussing seven weird differences between Australia and the United States. I'm currently wearing my American flag bandana. I promise I am not a Donald Trump supporter. I am also wearing my mummy hoodie uh, to honestly represent Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weiss because she's hot. Um, but that's about it. Anyway, let's hop right into the video. I have been living in New York for three and a half years, well, was living there, moved there in July of 2019, came back November of last year. So I spent a good three, three and a half years there, and I've been to 25 US states, and I grew up in Australia. So there'll be a lot of comparisons between Melbourne and New York specifically, but also the countries in general. Now, I know they are big countries, so this is just my opinion. But, uh, but anyway, I look forward to going through this because some of these are some of these are just crazy. Some of these things I just noticed myself. I'm like, all right, all right, good to know. Bypassing a PIN number. Now, this was kind of surprising to me. Maybe it's only a New York thing. I don't know. But say your tap and go is not working on your card and you're forced to insert it. Say you're at like the grocery store or whatever. I've seen the option where you can literally click a button to bypass using the PIN number, even if something is valued over $100. Sometimes banks will limit tap and goes and stuff at $100. I know you can increase it and change it depending on which bank you're with. But I have never in Australia, not once, seen the option where your tap and go is not working and you have to insert the card, that there is an option to bypass it. It's either you have to put your PIN in Otherwise, a transaction does not go through. So that is absolutely wild. So let me know if this is also a thing like throughout the US and let me know if you've ever seen it in Australia because I don't think I've ever seen that in Melbourne. That is just absolutely bonkers, bro. Bonkers. The price of alcohol. So this here is a good Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey. Mwah. I don't drink super duper often, but Australia's tax rate on alcohol is incredibly high and it has been incredibly high basically since Australia became a country in 1901. Basically a so say if we're talking in US dollars here just to make things easier in New York which is more expensive than most parts of the United States you can get a pack of 24 beers for about 25 US dollars I'm talking like glass bottles as well for about 25 US dollars to do the same thing in Australia a 24 pack of Budweiser or Stella or whatever cost you closer to about 40 US dollars so in Aussie it's almost 60 bucks which is just absolutely insane. The government knows that we love our drinks in Australia, so they like to tax us heavily on it so that they can get it like a reliable income stream. It's just, it's bonkers, really, really bonkers. So alcohol in the US being cheaper, I'm cool with that. <laughs> sales tax. Now this is an interesting one. So in Australia, we do have sales tax. It's called GST, the goods and services tax, which is worth 10%. Now the difference here is that for GST in products sold around Australia, it has to be included in the advertised price. So if you go to a coffee store and you see a medium latte is $4.50, you pay $4.50. If you go and you buy a Lego set at Target and it's $120, you pay $120. In the US, this is not the case, excluding five states, which apparently do not have a sales tax, so good for them. I think that's Alaska, Montana, Oregon, New Hampshire, and Delaware, if I'm not mistaken. But all the other states, they have their own sales taxes. Uh, even some cities have different sales taxes within the state itself. So New York City, for example, it's around 8.52%. So say you buy a McDonald's meal for $13.99, you add the sales tax, which equates to about $1.21, and you end up forking out around $15.20 which is one, really annoying when you're trying to budget, and two, if you're paying in cash, you always end up with a bunch of pennies. I swear there was a point where my wallet was so filled with pennies that I could just bash someone over the face and they'd die. Real, true story, true, I mean, I didn't kill anyone. Swear words in the workplace. There is definitely a difference here. 
In Australia, in general, swearing is seen as an okay thing, especially amongst my generation. You don't want to overdo it. People will think you're an idiot and unprofessional. But in the workplace, there are people are saying fuck, people are saying shit, people are saying the C word uh, on a fairly regular basis. In the US, specifically in the workplace, it's a bit different with friends and all that sort of stuff, but if you're like in New York or LA or Chicago or wherever, saying, you know, the F word and all that is not okay, especially the C word. The C word is like a big, big no-no mess. Like you'll get yourself in so much trouble. And I don't know, this is just like a personal thing. I've been told this. The C word in an American accent is very jabby. You know, it's very like, oh, you, you fucking, ah, oh, you know what I mean? But in an Australian accent, in terms of its in term of endearment, it's just like, oh, you fucking can't. You know what I mean? Instead of like, you fucking can't. You know, it's like, you fucking can't. You know, it's a term of endearment. I don't know if that made any freaking sense. Differences in slang words between the US and Australia. So a trash can is a bin. The trunk is the boot. A truck is a ute, flip-flops are thongs, french fries are chips, crisps are chips, Doritos are chips, whippets are called nangs. Does the list just goes on and on and on and on and on? The importance of dental health. Now, this may not be a surprise to a lot of people, but to me it was when I moved to New York. I was so surprised to see pretty much everyone that I was meeting having absolutely perfect teeth. Like phosphorescent white teeth, like Donnie from Wolf of Wall Street, beautiful smiles. It's just like everyone has nice teeth. And in Australia, there is definitely less emphasis on it. Like, don't get me wrong, dental health is super important because, you know, who doesn't want to have a good smile? But it's not as prominent here as it is in the US. We're definitely not as bad as the UK. The UK, you guys got to sort your shit out. Uh, but yeah, the US has massive, massive emphasis on dental health. Those bills from an early age must be enormous, dog. Tipping. In Australia, we don't tip because generally speaking, we don't need to. Because even very basic jobs that, you know, uni students are working in whatever, like a waiter gets paid a, at least $30 an hour, absolute minimum. So Australians and New Zealanders, we are not used to tipping people because we generally just don't have to. The only time we might tip someone is if someone has done like, gone out of their way to provide exceptional service. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> At like a restaurant or something. And they, uh, and we decide to give them a, like a bigger tip. But in the US, it is expected. You are expected to give tips, especially in the hospitality and service industry. And that's because they're getting paid terrible wages. They're getting paid so poorly. Apparently, as of the date of recording of this video, the US federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. That is almost like working for free. That is almost like working for free. That is absolute dog shit. It's terrible. So it makes sense why service workers and people in hospitality and many other industries want to get tipped so they get paid well. It makes total sense. And sometimes if you're lucky, if you're working at a place that gets tips more regularly and in higher quantities, you can be making a lot more money than, you know, above minimum wage for a lot of the countries like Australia where we get paid more. So... Yeah, I don't know, it's interesting. Alrighty, and that is the end of today's video. I have been Nate Panda. Thank you very much for watching. I'm very active over on my Instagram at Nathan Panda Official. I post regularly over there, so definitely drop me a follow. Please leave a comment on this video. I would love to know any other uh, things that you know that are different between Australia and the US, because I definitely, definitely want to know some more, because I'm sure that there are probably thousands of them. Uh, also, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I am ditching the country for Europe on the 5th of June. I'm going on some kind of adventure. I have no idea what it's going to entail, but I want to take you all on the journey with me. So please consider subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.